to face the Juanta Christos, the Antichrist, uh, that I did a video on the other day, and I just said, I'll just put some attributes out there. You can agree or disagree, okay? That's what this is all about on these uh, on these end-time studies is, the end-time studies is, you yeah, lay it out there, you agree or disagree. You work out your own salvation with trembling and fear. I just present evidence that I gather, and you you either agree or disagree, and, and you know, we choose to agree to disagree, but, it, that, you know, it doesn't make us want to fight and war against one another. We just simply present the truth, and the truth will stand on its own. Okay, now... It says, and, uh, this is what will happen if we are the generation of saints fighting the Antichrist. We will be kept through that horrible time. That is, as long as we do our part for God to continue to keep us as the Scriptures declare. Mm -hmm. Also remember the prophet Daniel went to the den of lions and, and the three men with him, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, went in the Nebuchadnezzar's blazing furnace. Excuse me. God did not keep this, these uh, mighty men of God from being thrown into that furnace. But yet he spared him, he spared them from the effects of that fire. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you praise the living God? He he allowed them to be put in that furnace. But let me tell you, there was another individual seen in that furnace. If you go read your Bible, and I want to tell you something, I, I believe with all my heart it was the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was standing in that furnace with them, keeping them from getting burned, and they were untouched. They come out of it just unscathed, didn't even have no smoke on them. So having said that, they, Jesus didn't rapture them out of here, out of that trouble, but he took them through the fire without burning. You see what I'm saying? Just, just another example, you draw your own conclusions. Now, also remember this. Watch this. All right, the number three argument after Revelation 4.1, we, re we read no more of the church. John's, uh, God said to John, come up here, and it symbolizes the rapture. That is their argument. It symbolizes the rapture. That is, not, that is not biblically sound whatsoever. That is an opinion. And just like tales, we all got opinions. Every one of us have a butt to sit on, and everybody's got their own opinions. But let the Word of God see how it will make you determine uh, what you will believe is truth and what you, you will believe is tradition. Now, okay, now watch this. After this, I looked, and there was a door standing open in heaven. The voice that I heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, like a trumpet, voice speaking like a trumpet, not the trumpet. The voice was like a trumpet. Go read your Bible. Come up here and I will show you things must take place after this. Answer to that. Well, we might not see the word church after the point of Revelation 4 1 in the book of Revelation. We still read often of the term saints, which comprises the ecclesia, of the body, or the modern day translation church. Not the building. A building is no more holier than that stump right there that you're looking at. Okay? The building is not holy. Yeah, let me tell you something. God said, I don't dwell in the temple made by hands. I dwell in the hearts and the minds of a believer. Number one, let's get that straight. You can build all the big buildings you want to. You can re uh, renovate football stadiums. My God in heaven, you can renovate football stadiums. You can do whatever you want to do. You can pad the pews. You can make sure you get out of there at 12 o'clock on the time. But that doesn't make you be the church. Let me tell you what makes you be the church. I won't tell you what makes you be the church. It's that you are a blood-bought child of the king, and you sit to Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And guess what? Faith without works is dead. He says, show me thy faith, and I'll show you my works. You get the two go in, in hand in hand. You can't separate them. Uh, I, but, but going there and bringing your big black Bible and sitting there and, and clapping your hands like you holy and lifting them up to God and then talking about the lady that come in there that might have been a prostitute with a low-cut dress and she's wanting to think about getting saved and y'all downing her and gossiping about her, my God, give me a break. I'd rather hang out with the people in the bar with some hypocrites in the church. That's just the way it is. Am I speaking about all? No, but if the shoe fits, put it on. Glory to God. I didn't mean to start preaching. This is supposed to be a study. Anyway, all right, check this out. For example... Watch this. I'm going to try to finish this up because I know I'm getting long-winded here. For example, he, the Antichrist, was given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, tongue, language, and people, and nation. If anyone is going to captivity, they're going to captivity. If anyone to be killed with a sword, he will be killed with a sword. This calls for the faith and patience of the saints. Well, 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 whoa, whoa, now, whoa, now. Okay, if the saints are up in heaven in the pre-tribulation rapture, uh, how come it's calling right here about uh, uh, faith for the saints and, and, and stuff like that to endure and over, be overcomers? Being an overcomer is not sitting there and clapping your hands to some song on Sunday, glory to God, and, 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 and saying, I'm going to fly away in the morning because it ain't going to happen. Now, God may require your soul today, tonight. He may require mine during, during this uh, video uh, exercise here, but I don't think so because, you know what, I believe I've heard from God as far as his calling on my life, and I want to tell you something. The Bible says this, no man knoweth the day nor the hour that God will return. So quit trying to say you do. Okay? You put a false, you put a false sense of security on people when you put this pre-tribulation uh, tradition out there and, and it makes people where they don't prepare and when they call it as a bird and a snare, the Bible talks about. And guess what? And, and I say this is all sincerity and humbleness. Guess what's going to happen? 
when you don't fly away and you don't leave here and all hell's breaking loose, every one of you preachers that have preached this, you're going to lose every ounce of your credibility on everything, not just that specific item. Do you get what I'm saying? Anyway, let's move on. Okay, now, watch this. Argument number four. Lot was taken out of Sodom before it was destroyed, and Noah was in the ark before the flood, Scripture says. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will always be, also be in the coming of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was in the same days, like in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, selling, planting, building. But the day that Lot left Sodom, fire and, rain, uh, and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. And let me add something to this on Sodom and Gomorrah. Homosexuality, gluttony, and drunkenness was the three main sins why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, them three main sins are in America today, and I've come by here to tell you something today. Whether you like me or not or you hate me, I really don't give a, I don't give a rip about it whether you hate me or like me, but I'm going to tell you something. If God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he'll destroy America. You better wake up and understand that, and I'm going to tell you something. It's coming. It's on the way because the sins of this nation have reached God's nostrils, and it stinks to his nostrils, and God will deal with it. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. I'm going to tell you something else. If you think it ain't coming, you sit back there and you don't prepare. You understand? You think that you're going to be jerked out of here because you're so holy. I tell you what you do. You spend 10 minutes in a cotton-picking mirror and look at yourself for 10 minutes and think about your life and everyday life and see how holy you are, just like I have to do. I tell you what I am. Woe is me. I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm a sinner saved by grace through faith. I strive to enter the narrow gate, but I still mess up. And I'm going to tell you something else, buddy. Let me run something else by you. If you think you're going to leave here before trouble and you're not going to face you're not going to face the wrath of what's coming, you're wrong. The wrath of God is revealed upon all sons of disobedience. Glory to God. Do you see what I'm saying? I know God has not appointed us to wrath but obtain mercy and salvation, but you listen to me real clear and let me say something to you. You you you, you literally, you literally you literally call yourself holier and higher than, than the apostles and the prophets, my God, when, when, when they gave their life for, for, for the word of God to spread it. What you doing to spread it, I might ask. Anyway, I didn't mean to get, I didn't mean to get riled up, but it, it just bothers me when people just want to use tradition and act like it's thus saith God, and I just simply present the scriptures and letting you know that, you know what? Prepare. Be ready. While some might look at Luke uh, 17, 26 and see the righteous being delivered, uh, guess what? The wicked people living through no day and lots day were obviously to the immediate danger. They continued to live an ordinary kind of life without repentance of their sins and turning to God. Hence, they were all destroyed when God came with a judgment. Correct? Notice the rest of the context of the passage. On the day, on that day, no one who was on the roof house with his goods should go inside. Likewise, the one in the field should not go back for anything. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life We'll preserve it. I tell you that on that night there will be two in the bed. One will be taken, another will be left. Two women will be grinding. One will be taken, another left. Where, Lord, they asked. He said, replies, oh, where the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. My, my, my. You ought to do your word study on that. I don't have time to do that right now. Send me an email if you want a word thing done on it. We'll get with it. Watch this. The disciples, watch this. The disciples asked, where they were taken. Jesus answered, referring to the dead bodies of the vultures being gathered there. Mm -hmm. That refers to those wicked people, not the righteous. Notice the parallel mess passage in Matthew's gospel. Now watch this. Watch this. It was in the days of Noah, being the coming of the Son of Man from the days of the flood. People were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in the marriage up to the day Noah in the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came took them all the way. Mm -hmm. That is how it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in a field, one will be taken, one will be left. Two women will be grinding, one will be taken, one will be left. Therefore keep watch, because you know not what day the Lord will come, but understand this. I love this. Praise God for Jesus Christ. If the owner of the house had known what time the thief was coming, he would not. He would kept watching and would not have suffered his house to be broken into. So you almost be ready, because the Son of Man will come in an hour when you don't expect him to. Mm-hmm. So go ahead and preach that pre-tribulation rapture, saying that before the tribulation you're going to be took out of here. No man knoweth the date or the hour, not even angels in heaven, only God. And based on Scripture, it ain't going to happen. There ain't going to be no pre-tribulation rapture based on Scripture. Like I said, draw your own conclusions. I'm just laying it out there. Now, watch this. Okay, let's go on to the argument number six. Jesus taught, be always on watch. Pray that you'll be able to escape all these things that's about to happen. Pray that you'll be kind of worthy to escape these things and stand for the Son of Man. Now, let me run something to you for a minute. I've got some, some people in my family that are very, my, my sister's very ill. My mother's getting of age, and, and my grandmother 